Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. We've got a ton going on here at Spirit Blade Productions and Christian Geek Central, including our in-depth Bible study for geeks, movie, game, and other entertainment reviews or commentary, live streams, Christian geek news, original audio dramas, and tons more. And on top of all that, you can become a Spirit Blade insider with an influential voice and get access to exclusive content and rewards. It's your involvement as a patron that will keep all of this going and growing, so I want to thank you for your consideration in that. For more information, please check out our Patreon page through the link below at patreon.com slash spiritbladeproductions. Thanks for listening. The truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. Hey guys, Peter Franson here from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions. Right now I'm going to attempt to examine the Bible and dissect some of the churchy language we can really easily take for granted, digging into history and languages as I'm able to try and get at the heart of the text so that we can hopefully see and then apply at least some of what God has for us in these words today. Now, I'm not formally trained in scripture. I'm just a guy using resources and a questioning mind to try and get at the truth. That's something that we can all do, so I hope that you will do that with me. We've been going through the book of Philippians and have arrived now at chapter 3, verses 3 through 7, which in the ESV reads, For we are the circumcision who worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh also. If anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless." But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Uh, now, since I commented on verse 3 last time, I included it here really just to provide context, kind of a, get a running start into verse 4 and the verses that follow. So looking at verse 4 again, it says, Though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh also, if anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Uh, Paul contrasted the blessings of the believer with the, evil, with the evil and harmful nature of the Judaizers in verses 2 through 3. The Judaizers were a group that tried to convince non-Jewish male Christians that they needed to be circumcised. Paul exposes the fact that they were pursuing this sense of self-confidence and self-justification in the flesh, he says, or stated in another way, based on their natural state, natural efforts, natural tendencies apart from God. Specifically, they were pursuing self-justification through their Jewish ethnicity and practices. In verse 4, Paul points out that under the self-justifying view of the Judaizers, Paul, their chief opponent, actually has more merit than they do. He then proceeds to detail why. Verse 5 says, Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee. Okay, so his reason for mentioning the time of his circumcision may have been to point out that he was not an adult convert, which would have given him lower uh, status in Judaism, but was instead a child that was raised from the beginning in a Jewish home that strictly followed the laws of circumcision given to Israel. Uh, and you can see Genesis 17:12 and Leviticus 12:3 uh, for where we find those. He was an Israelite and specifically of the tribe of Benjamin. Uh, now this could have been a detail added simply to cement and emphasize his Hebrew ethnicity, or because the tribe of Benjamin was respected for several parts of its history. Uh, it's somewhat unclear what Paul means by calling himself a Hebrew of Hebrews. Scholars don't really know for sure what's, what's going on there. It might have referred to his genetic purity or the linguistic and cultural purity with which he was raised. Uh, Paul was, before his conversion to Christianity, a Pharisee. He mentions that, as to the law, a Pharisee, which was the Jewish party that most strictly adhered to the Jewish law. Um, and then in verse 6, he says, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Uh, Paul was once so committed to the same ideals as the Judaizers that he was known as a major persecutor of Christians. And we see that in Acts chapter 9, verses 13 and 21. And when judged by those holding that worldview, he would have been completely blameless in his adherence to Jewish law. And it's important to note, 
you know, when judged by those holding that worldview. Of course, Paul himself had since realized that no one is capable of perfectly fulfilling the law uh, and as a result being justified by it before God's perfect and all-knowing evaluation. Um, we see him talk about that in uh, Galatians 2.16, is uh, one place anyway. Uh, verse 7 again says, But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Paul's perspective had changed so much since encountering Christ. All these traits he had once considered to be profit or gain in his endeavor to establish his own righteousness, uh, but in valuing his own deeds and ethnicity so much, he, was, he realizes now he was actually experiencing loss of righteousness, moving further and further away from righteous standing before God. Uh, he recognized now that it was only through Christ that people are made right before God. And so it's for the sake of Christ and the righteousness he alone provides that Paul looks back on his life here and concludes that all his prior values were not benefiting him, but taking away from him. Uh, okay, so what's in all this, maybe specifically for geeks? Well, uh, as I mentioned last week, because it was relevant, and as I've mentioned many times before, as people who uh, often struggle with lifelong uh, insecurity, we geeks can find ourselves trying to find security in the wrong places, uh, like the Judaizers did. We might feel like, you know, well, I'm totally different from the Judaizers, but actually the, the parallels um, for which the principles here still apply I don't think are hard to find. Instead of bragging about, you know, the homes that we were born into or our natural ethnicity, we can instead assign ourselves value or status based on other things that just kind of came or come naturally to us, like our love of geek entertainment and how hardcore, you know, we are. That's not something that we have to work at. That's not, you know, that's not a virtue that we are disciplined that we've developed. You know, it's just this natural tendency that we give ourselves to, right? Um, we may not be uh, meticulous followers of Jewish law, but we might seek status or reputation based on our knowledge of geeky uh, facts, scientific facts, even biblical facts. Uh, we can subtly be looking for uh, or trying to establish our status based on those kinds of, that kind of knowledge. Uh, we may almost subconsciously think that our zeal and passion for the truth elevate us in God's kingdom somehow. Uh, we'd certainly say, you know, well, I don't persecute the church like Paul did at one point, my gosh. But I got to say, many times I've interacted uh, or seen zealous Christians online whose judgmental attitudes as they express themselves results in harming their fellow Christians. We end up hurting each other out of what we call passion for Christ but what is often really just us trying to highlight something good about ourselves and our standards. Um, insecurity is something that I have struggled with for as long as I rem can remember. I still struggle with it. I've got pretty good at subtly drawing attention to what I think are my positive qualities when I'm in various social situations. I, I've gotten better and better over the years at, at kind of like being subtle with that, but still putting it out there, you know? Um, it's really kind of disgusting when I step outside of myself and step outside of myself and see that happening or that it has just happened. You know, the Holy Spirit, through Paul's example and experience here, is calling us to recognize those kinds of pursuits as counterproductive, as loss and not gain in our service to God. Uh, and the Spirit is instead calling us to truly consider and live in the reality of Christ's righteousness having been assigned to us. If you'd like some help finding a good church in your area, I would love to help you do that if I can. Online resources and communities are good supplements, but by nature they just can't speak to your particular situation like relationships in a local church can. The context for almost everything in the New Testament assumes that we're serving and building purposeful relationships in a local church. So whether you're in a church that just kind of lacks Bible-based intentionality or maybe not attending any church at all, if I can help you get connected connected to an authentic, compassionate, Bible-oriented church, I want to do that. Uh, you can email me at paeter at spiritblade.com, and we can look at some websites of churches in your area together.